everything else, everything will take care of itself. You obviously want to come in on a roll, but but coming in off of a loss, how can that help refocus things, especially as you come into that 116 game? Yeah, I mean, really, honestly, we um, flushed the whole loss on Saturday, and it's like a new season for us, and we just really got a chance to refocus on what got us to this point. So we're going into this game looking at this as our Super Bowl because it's the first time in the NCAA tournament, and Wagner's a great school, and we can't overlook them. What, what are the things that make – your team special? What are, what are the things that sort of stand out to you? We don't care who gets the credit. We just want to go out there and win. And I think great things happen like that when you got a team with a bunch of unselfish guys who all just want to win. How tough is it just the nature of this tournament, knowing that any game could be your last, not really being able to mentally is it, Does it help because you can't really prepare for it mentally? It's definitely nerve-wracking now. I think now more than ever, like, you look at one seed and it's not much of a – drop off from a one seed to like maybe even a four seed because college basketball is so competitive now. So it's one of those things where it's nerve wracking, but we've all, well, me and RJ have been there before and we just got to make sure the other guys know what's at stake and what it takes to go far. What is your message to those guys that haven't been in this atmosphere? I think in March, just the teams that are the most together and the most in sync are the teams that win because it'll be runs all throughout yeah. March. but. Not letting that affect you and staying locked in on what's the main goal is how teams win. Do you personally yeah. feel any added pressure heading into this NCAA tournament? No, just because um, all year I feel like we face pressure, but we haven't looked at it like that. We got a bunch of guys who don't get nervous to play. We just go out there and we have fun, and we know if we stick to our game plan and just keep everything to the basics, we'll be good. I know this is a couple years ago, but. Last time you were in a tournament, I made that Final Four run. Are there any similarities to maybe the vibes heading into this year from that, that season a few years ago? Mm, a little bit. I think as a team, we have some of that togetherness that we had, like my junior year, and we all just love playing with each other. And we got the fans really involved and everyone involved. So it's similarities. How important is it for you guys to have gotten this first and second round bid in Charlotte close to home? It's huge because it's like playing in the Smith Center in Charlotte, really, and we know Carolina fans are going to show out and going to be super energetic and pumped up, so we're super excited. Looking at that, like, freshman year to now, your journey, how much does this last ride mean to you? It means everything. I think this is why I came back my junior year and obviously, well, after my junior year, but it didn't go how I wanted. So now, two years after that, having a chance to go out there and – kind of conquer what I came back for is huge for me. What about just for you and RJ together? It's a last ride for both of y'all. Have you thought about that? And kind of have, what does that do to your mindset or emotionally or, or any of that stuff? We want to go out the right way. Um, just being with RJ and playing with him for these last four years have been amazing. And we talk about it all the time, even before the season, just getting to this point and wanting to prove everybody wrong, especially after last year. To be at this point, really, I mean, we got everything ahead of us, and it's all on the floor, so we got to go get it. You said, after, you said on senior night that it felt like you'd been here forever. Mm -hmm. uh, does it feel now, looking back a little bit, I know you're trying to stay in the moment. Uh, For sure. Does because it feel like it's gone by quick, finally being toward the end, no matter what happens? When you say it like that, it honestly does. I feel like I, we just uh, canceled the season because of COVID in Greensboro, and now I'm looking back four years later, it was a quick – now look at it like that. Today, flipping in the perspective. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Armando. No problem. There's a lot of younger guys on the team, obviously, who haven't had the chance to experience anything like this. What is the message that you and RJ are sending to? Just be together and listen to what the coach is saying. Our coaches, they do a great job of just simplifying everything for us and. If we just listen to them, everything will work out. And then uh, our freshmen have been doing a great job all year. Um, Elliot all year, I mean, just to be a point guard, playing at the highest level on a brand as big as you and seeing how he's handled himself, it shows that he's ready for the moment. So I think the tournament for him will be great. Yeah. Um, the, the chance to hang a banner, as I've talked about that a lot, we'll have one up there for the regular season. Uh, but now that you, know, you have mm -hmm. another opportunity here with getting to the Final Four, potentially a national championship, what's the motivation there with that goal? 
when you come to a school like UNC to be able to hang banners, and that's the only way you'll be remembered as a team at UNC is hanging banners. So it's one of those things where obviously we wanted to win the ACC uh, tournament, but we got the ACC regular season, so we can hang two of the three banners. We'll love it. Do you feel like for you, like the way the city is secure at this moment? So I couldn't, I couldn't hear you because Kirsch was yelling. <laughs> <laughs> for, for you, do you feel like your legacy at this point is secure, and how much do you think about kind of how you want to leave this place over the next few weeks? I do feel like my legacy is secure, but I mean, also too, it's one of those things where I kind of want to heighten it too because I know I've had a lot of individual success here and some team success, minimal. Um, to be able to be considered like one of those guys here, uh, you got to win a national championship. So it's definitely a huge goal for me to get done. Did you watch the tournament a year ago, or did you just want to be done with basketball? And get yeah, I didn't watch the tournament at all last year. Mm. Do you know who won? <laughs> UConn. Yes, UConn. Yes. I know UConn. <laughs> what was the fight? It was UConn, Miami, FAU, FAU and, and San Diego State. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch those games. What, just because you were in such a, a mood about it or, or what? Yeah, it was one of those things where it just like, I don't know. I just, I, I couldn't watch it, honestly. It was just a tough watch and... Yeah, because it was one of those things where, like, you go from being in that situation to nobody even caring about you. So I didn't watch it at all. How did you, what did you do? Um, I mean, it's all over social media. It's all over TV for four weeks. I was, in my, I was in Miami. I was having a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you're going out, and it's on TV. And people are jazzed up. So everybody's got a pool in their bed and stuff. How did you avoid it when it was there and you were in the same place? Change the TV. I mean, what if it's like in a bar or something like that? You can't change it. I wouldn't well, go to it. Say, I'm on the bed. Please change the channel. Yeah, I had the private room, so I told him no TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this comes back to NIL money. I'm gonna miss this, Armand. I had to I had the private this. room. We get private rooms when we go out. So, so you didn't make, like, let's stay on that. How, how much did it? How much did? How long did it take you to get over the fact that you weren't a part of it? and you didn't watch it, and you detached from basketball, which sounds like an interesting thing mm -hmm. for a guy who's been playing it like you your whole life. How long did it take you to sort of reattach and move forward? It took a minute, man. I want to say all the way till after we scrimmaged FAU, and I knew we would be a great team. Uh, I told y'all after that, too. Yeah. I knew we would be a great team. Um, you said that in Charlotte. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I wasn't really sure going into this year how good we would be. Like, I had no clue, like, if we would be a good team. Like, because it was a lot of different pieces, and I didn't really know, like, how good everybody would be until we actually got out on the floor. So, but leading up, like, until that, I was just like, man, like, I don't want that feeling again. And it was, it was tough for a long time. Like, me, RJ, all of us, we just felt terrible for a long time. I remember in Charlotte, what you said was it gave you a lot of optimism because you guys defended that. Mm -hmm. you were, you yeah, I said that defense. early in the year. I said yeah. we might be a great defensive team. We ended up being top six. People kind of looked at you like, okay. Well, yeah, because, like, that's atypical of a UNC team because we outscore people usually. But just FAU, like, the amount of guards they had and just how they played. And like I said, I saw how great we could be defensively. So after that, I was like, man, we got a chance. Like, I was telling my people, I didn't want to tell y'all to, like, jinx it. But I'm like, man, we could – I think we could win the ACC. I think we could be like a top five team. You can always tell us. What?